Hi there, my name is Jan Braga and I'm from the Storybook team. And I'm here to talk about component testing. So when it comes to developing components, a typical workflow for an application developer is the following. Let's say you're developing a sidebar component, but in order to actually test it, you need to navigate throughout all your app pages. And then you need to interact in this restaurant detail page, add some elements to the cart so that you can see the sidebar in a failed state. So as you're making more changes in the future, you want to be able to know whether your component still behaves correctly, which means that you need to do that manual step over and over again, which is a rather tedious job. So that's why we write tests. We want to automate those steps so that we can catch regressions automatically and get confidence so we can work on our, on our app. So when it comes to testing components, how do you actually do it? Well, let's take a simple use case here. We have a page that contains a button that once clicked opens a model. The anatomy of a component test needs three steps. You need to be able to isolate a component and set up a test case for it. You need to be able to simulate user interactions like clicking on a button. And you can use tools like testing library for that. And lastly, you need to run assertions so that if you click on a button, you have to know whether a model appears on screen or not. And you can use tools like Jest or VTest for that. But the thing is, it takes quite a lot of work to set up those isolated test cases. So on the right side, we have an example using React testing library in Jest, where in order to actually just render the component in isolation, I needed to set up a routing mock. I needed to pass a theme provider. And I also needed to set up some state management mock just for the component to render. So then I can finally worry about making some interactions and making some assertions. But because all of these things are running in Node with JS DOM, I don't have a visual feedback as I'm setting these up. So if everything is simple and easy to set up, great. But if it's a little complex and you get some errors, yeah, best of luck. How do you translate all of that blob of HTML into something visual? So what if UI tests gave you a visual feedback directly in the browser? That's pretty much the motivation why we created Storybook Interaction Tests. So Storybook Interaction Tests would allow you to write tests in your stories and get to run them directly in the browser. But before I even get to that, let's just take a step back. If you're using Storybook, let me tell you that you are already writing test cases. So Stories pretty much define a test case for a component. And you can be writing particular stories for, let's say, a restaurant card, where you're testing the loading state of your component. You're testing a closed and a new state, which is already a great way to make sure that your component behaves as expected. But also, you might be using, let's say, Storybook to test theme variants. So your components can be looking good on dark mode and light mode, and you're able to actually check those side by side and see whether your component is actually taking into account those theme tokens. And maybe you're also using add-on controls, for instance, so you can get into specific edge cases, like what if I have multiple categories? Or what if my component doesn't have any category at all? Did I just catch a bug? Or did I just notice that there's a missing story? So you can also get into something more complex in Storybook. You can, you're able to render pretty much anything you want, and that goes for more complex features or even pages. But as you get to that level, you're probably going to have to mock server requests. And you can use Mock Service Worker to actually proxy those requests and mock the way you want. And as a, an example, I have an entire page rendered in isolation that is fully functional but I can also leverage the mocking from mock service worker to get into a loading state, which is really hard to reach, or a 404 or a error 500 state. So going back to interaction tests, pretty much you were already able to test a lot of stuff in your storybook, but we want to augment that experience even more. So interaction tests is pretty much where your stories are test cases but you can also now simulate user behavior in the browser by using the tools that you already use and love, like tests, testing library and Jest. So for instance, in our button scenario, we actually get to open the model automatically in the browser. So how does that actually work? Well, let's take a look. 
If you're writing stories, you might be already familiar with args and decorators and other properties. So we now provide a play function, which is a new annotation to the story that essentially executes after the component renders. So in this example, because my story is already set up, I only worry about the interactions and assertions. So in this play function, it contains the test code that would have been in a test file otherwise, but it's just writing um, directly in Storybook. And in order to make this possible, as you can see, I'm using fire event and expect to be able to click on a button and expect the model to be there. I'm using browser compatible wrappers that provide are provided by Storybook for testing library and Jest. So then my Storybook provides this very interesting automated experience. But to make things even more interesting, we provided an add-on called Interactions. The add-on Interactions essentially provides a visual panel for your, your code, which is shown in the panel. And you can step through the interactions by using the debugger. And that makes it more easy for you to understand what's going on without having to go all the way back to the code all the time. So let's take a look at it as an example. I have an entire app actually as a story in Storybook where each story represents a flow from the homepage down to specific story. So over here, you can see that for each and every page, I have interactions which are executing previous interactions and more interactions so I can get all the way to the success page. And in the add-on panel, I can click on the debugger to go all the way to the first interaction and step through them to see exactly what is actually going on. I can also click on a specific one to jump directly to it, or I can go all the way to the end. If there's any failure in between, you will see them visually in the browser. So going back once again to the code, you actually noticed that I was using different interactions that got previous interactions from other stories. So actually the play function can be reused, which makes that your, makes your tests much more maintainable and easy to extend. And they're also shown in the panel, but also the step function, which, which we also provide gives you a nice way to wrap a set of interactions to have a more readable label. And finally, you also get to see the actual code from your interaction in the panel. And the interesting fact is that the play function runs any JavaScript code you want to put there. So you can actually augment your experience by customizing the way you want. In this example, I actually used the play function in an augmented way to provide a more visual feedback of my interactions so that I can show this to stakeholders and they get to experience exactly what the flow is in a more visual way. And you can pretty much implement anything you want like that. So in order to make things even more interesting, the testing ecosystem of Storybook also provides a test runner. So you can get this nice local experience in Storybook, uh, but you get to automate those tests by using a Storybook test runner, which is powered by Jest and Play, right? And you can get to use all of the interesting features that they provide. So the Storybook test runner gets each and every one of your stories and turns them into tests. So if they do not have an interaction test, they are tested for rendering issues. And if they do have an interaction test, they execute the interaction and you get the result from it. And the very interesting experience is that the Storybook test runner runs in headless mode, but once there are any failures, you actually not only get the error in the, your CLI, but a link that once clicked opens your storybook directly with the add-on panel shown with the failure. And that helps you get a lot of confidence and debug your stuff directly in the browser, which is really cool. So just like any other test runner, the storybook test runner also provides code coverage reports. So you can pretty much get to know exact, exactly which parts of your app are getting tested and which ones are not. So you can leverage that to generate HTML reports that actually provide you a visual way. Oh, look at that. The loading state of my button is actually not covered, which probably means that you need to write a new story. So code coverage also works seamlessly with any tools that you might be using in your workflows like CodeCov and Sorna Q. And that's pretty much why 
uh, we think Storybook is the foundation for testing UI. There are a lot of very interesting functionality there and we're putting tons of effort uh, in the upcoming releases. So talking about automated tests, if you're actually using Chromatic, you might be wondering, hmm, will I also get uh, support for interaction tests? Well, the answer is yes. Chromatic is always up to date with any Storybook version, which means that it's already supporting Storybook 7 and its features. So, so, so Chromatic is going to run visual regression tests, as you already know, uh, but also now in par with um, interaction tests. So if there is any failure, as you can see here in the dashboard, it will be caught by Chromatic. On the right side, you see that we have different types. So now there's a new type called interaction. And in this case, my restaurant detail page with the model open failed my test. The thing is that Chromatic provides the visual state of the component before uh, it failed with the interaction, but also the whole feedback directly in Chromatic. So not only you get to see the error of message, but you also get to see the composition of environments like the branch and the browser and the viewports, which happened, uh, the error happened. You also get to click on a link that goes directly to your deployed storybook with the failure open as well. But the difference here is that Chromatic deploys every commit of your, uh, every commit you make, Chromatic makes a deployment for your storybook, which means that you have a reproducible URL that you can share with anyone from your team. So Chromatic also has integrations for CI, which means that if you are writing um, interaction tests and they fail, or maybe you have some visual regression, they will also be shown in your workflows. And you can optionally uh, set up like a block so that people can only merge a pull request once everything goes green. And that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you. And I hope you enjoyed this so far. Um, you can reach out to the tutorials we have on the website. There's an entire book on UI testing, which has nine different chapters on all kinds of testing you can do for UI. And um, yeah, I hope you liked this so far. Thank you so much and happy testing.